This year at CES, there was a lot of discussion about motherboards like the Project Zero boards from MSI that had rear connectors, but there was little to no discussion about third-party case vendors making cases to support these motherboards. Because as you saw probably from a lot of MSI coverage, they talked about their own cases and everyone talked about MSI cases. But today I'm going to show you a case from Leon Lee, which you might be familiar with, that's been redesigned to support these motherboards with the back connectors. And this is going to be the trend this year. We're going to see more cases that support these motherboards. But before we take a look at this new case from Leon Lee, here is a word from today's video sponsor. The sponsor's right here on the board. Look closely. This video is brought to you by VIPSEDKey.com. You install Windows and you see the watermark of death. You don't need to fork out a couple hundred dollars for a key. You can grab one from today's video sponsor. From VIPSEDKey.com for a tenth of the price and you can use our code GEAR to get 25% off. How good's that? That takes that already cheap Windows key and makes it even cheaper. You place your order. Bingo bango, you've got your key on your orders page, you chuck that key into the activation screen and you're good to go. No more watermark of death. Use code GEAR for 25% off, link in the description. On with the video. This is a very popular case from Lee and Lee. It's called the Landcool 216, but this one's got a bit of a spin. It's called the 216R, and the R stands for Rear Connector. It has additional features to support these rear connector motherboards. This is the 216R, this is the regular 216. It's probably apparent already, just from taking a quick gaze at the case, that the 216R has the cutouts along the edge of the motherboard for those rear connectors, and the regular 216 doesn't have it. However, curiously, I did notice that it has cutouts for not only ATX boards, but also MATX boards, that support the rear connectors. I think it's pretty interesting that there's MATX cutouts on an ATX case, and I get it, because Leon Lee wants to give everyone some love. They want anyone who's got a rear connector motherboard to be able to use their board in a case like this. I think this is great, and the only board that we've got with back connectors is also MATX, so this allows us to show you guys how this fits and where everything comes out. Here's the real difference between the 216 and the 216R. You can see that the Velcro strap tie down points have been changed. This case, remember, is not just for back connect motherboards. This will support any motherboard that you wanna put in it. And the panel here that you can change the offset is the same as well. You can flip that over, make it EATX or whatever you like. So that's mainly the same. You will notice that the cutouts for the EPS power connectors obviously have changed and they still have the pass-throughs at the top for those cables as well if you want, but they've slightly changed them to be a little bit higher up because the top panel is removable, it's fine. You can pull the top panel off and then help route those cables through. There's also other little things that they've changed too. The tie down points for 24 pin power cables. Here they've completely removed them, obviously to make way for a huge long hole for these back connector motherboards. Here they've got three tie downs in total. So, you know, it's, it's mainly the same stuff we're seeing here. Even with the section that I mentioned where they removed these tie down points, they're still in the same location. They've just lowered the height of this bracket here. The thing is, there has to be clearance on the back side of the case for these back connectors. So going forward with reviews that support these cases, we'll be talking about the clearance behind the motherboard tray for these connectors. The reason being that if a case does technically support it, it still needs to have the depth behind to support that. Otherwise, you'll be bending your cables and introducing more problems than you're anticipating, especially with motherboards that we've seen that have the 12 volt high power connectors on the backside of the motherboard. You cannot bend those cables at all, basically. Well, for the first three centimeters anyway. And if there's not at least four centimeters of clearance on the back of a case, that can start to become a bit of an issue. That's the main thing I thought was gonna be an issue with these cases going forward, is that clearance. But 
Speaking of, when we covered the new MSI case that supports these back connector motherboards, even MSI's case was a little bit uh, on the close side for my liking for clearance, but it was fine. There's also other little considerations as well. Let's chuck the board in and I'll just chuck a couple screws in really quickly. All right, already we've got really good pass through for all of the rear connectors. What we're seeing with the MATX board from MSI is everything perfectly lines up with the holes cut out on the back of the motherboard. Now this isn't Lee and Lee just saying, hey, these are just random places we think we should cut out. This is actually where things have been cut out to support motherboards like this. Now, these back connectors introduce new problems that we have kind of seen in the industry over the last 20 years. First of all, when companies like Lee and Lee are designing new cases, they really need to get their hands on motherboards, both current and coming up, to allow for these cutouts for these rear connectors. The other side of that is motherboard manufacturers create standard locations for these cutouts because I have seen other boards from other manufacturers with back connectors that don't have things quite in the same place as this MSI board. Now, this is the only board that I've got on hand with rear connectors, so this is all we've got to go on for now, but everything lines up really nicely for the back connect the motherboards here. There's no issues I can see really with clearance between the edge of certain parts of things and being able to plug connectors in. So let's plug in some of the connectors that we've got here without doing a power supply and I'll grab a power supply and we'll dive into that as well. Let's start off with front panel wiring. This is a single block on the 216R. We'll just plug that in, no problems with clearance. We'll do the front panel audio cable, no problems with clearance. One thing we'll start to see change quite a lot with these new back connector cases is a lot of these cables that you're used to seeing in a straight connector will now be a right angle connector. I'm all about that right angle connector life. So this reduces the height of the overall cable. I will say that I think the MSI case from memory didn't have a right angle connector for this cable. Some people may be concerned with things like PWM fan cables with these rear connector motherboards, but look how pliable each of these cables is. And this is the story with almost all of these cables. So breaking them is highly unlikely. There are exceptions to this rule. Sometimes fan splitters will have multiple connections coming out of here and you can split them, but they're, they're not very common. Just to reiterate that last point, when we plug it into a PWM fan header on the motherboard, look how pliable this cable is, right? It's basically made of jelly or elastic. Don't take my word for that. That's just an expression, but you can see what I mean. Here's a bit of a fun fact if you guys didn't know. We also have power supplies now with back connectors, meaning we can build entire PCs without plugging any power cables in till right at the end helping to improve cable management. Now, I thought this was an interesting example because this was the first power supply that I picked up off our power supply pie. And I was like, hang on, this is actually quite interesting. People might, might like to know more about this, but yes, we do have power supplies like this Corsair RM1000X Shift. So anyway, let's show you what that would look like. Let's just say this is either a reconnected power supply or a normal one, but I mean, we're lucky enough to have a rear connected power supply as well. So if we plug in these cables, you'll see that the case depth does play an integral part in cable managing this stuff. To be fair, I kind of really like the shift power supplies from Corsair. It does make it a lot easier if you've got the clearance for it. So already we're seeing that, you know, plenty of play here and plenty of flexibility with the cables down here, which is not really the point of the video, but you know, it is worth mentioning, but let's just plug in an EPS power cable just to show you what the deal is. These are also very pliable. We'll plug that in and we can fold that straight down and you can put that into the cable management channel, whatever. You get the idea, right? And then the main cable is really the 24 pin power cable. These are less pliable and you know, like they're a bit of a handful at the best of times, but 
because the clip on the 24 pin power connector on these rear motherboards is not on the outside of the of the connector which it usually is it's on the inside facing towards the middle of the motherboard it now makes it easier to run the cable this way and you can see that there is plenty of clearance here for the 24 pin power cable and one thing to note especially with the 216r is that velcro tie down has been put exactly in the right place to cable manage that 24 pin power cable without having to worry about where it's going to run. So look at that, that's just so clean on the backside already. And all I've done is cable manage the 24 pin power cable. The other thing is with the 216R, and this was also true of the 216, the cable management on this case is awesome. It's got these clips so you can just clip the cable down and you're good to go. I didn't even push it all the way in, but look at that already. Look, this is a bit of a nightmare, I will admit, whatever, but you can clean that up. But ultimately, this is a very nice way to build a system without any cables showing on the front side. A lot of this rear connector stuff that we're seeing with these new motherboards is a lot to do with vanity, and it's not particularly the best way to build a PC. It does make it easier in some instances, but it's mainly to show that everything on this motherboard is plugged in, but we haven't seen a single cable to indicate that anything's plugged in. And that is why I can see this being nice. Now, I had an idea in my head that I always wanted to see case manufacturers make a back plane that sits on the motherboard tray and then you just push the motherboard in and it clips in and that connects to power that way. Kind of like what we see with redundant power supplies and servers and whatnot. But I think this is definitely a much more practical way of doing that because every motherboard is going to be different. But unless motherboard manufacturers can agree to make a standard, which they just never will, this is our next best option. I think a lot of other channels and people haven't had a chance to get their hands on this hardware on their own to really play around with it, to see what the limitations and the capabilities are. And sometimes we're lucky enough to get this stuff really, really early and get a chance to play with this stuff. So thanks to MSI for sending this stuff out ages ago, but also to Leon Lee, because when I did an overview of this motherboard, when we first got it from MSI before it was even released, Leon Lee hit me up and they're like, hey, we actually have the 216R that you kind of mentioned in your video that supports these rear connector motherboards. The only problem is, after speaking to Leon Lee about the 216R in particular, is this case will not be available in the US or Australia or Europe. This is an Asia only exclusive case for now, as far as what I understand. This may change by the time this video comes out or after CES, everyone's talking about it and Leon Lee's like, hey, well, there's actually a market for this for the rest of the world. But yeah, as far as I know, it is a Asia exclusive case for now. But if you want to see more cases like this, please let us know in the comments because it is something we're going to be talking about going forward because this is going to be the trend for the year. Mostly with case trends over the last five years on the channel, I've predicted what they've been every single year. And this is the one we're going to be seeing in 2024. I started to talk about this at the end of last year too, but yeah, rear connectors are going to be a big thing. If companies like Corsair get on board with this stuff, it's going to make huge waves. Lanley is popular, don't get me wrong, but Corsair, they're the company you got to look out for when it comes to implementing things across the board that everyone will adopt. I didn't go to CES, I didn't see all of the news coming out of CES, but it turns out that Asus and Corsair are working together on their back connector solution. So I thought I'd add this in after the fact, just in case someone commented it, because after doing a bit more research into what is going on with the ecosystem, that is something interesting that I found out. Maybe you guys will find that interesting too. There's a lot of developments going on, especially companies like Silverstone and Thermaltake are also on board with this. So only time will tell. We're going to see some really cool stuff this year, hopefully. Probably at Computex, we'll see more. Let us know what you guys think of this back connect, the stuff. I think it's very, very interesting. Whether or not it'll be here to stay is yet to be seen, but 
As with RGB, RGB went through a few different iterations. We saw 12 volt analog RGB, then we saw digital and addressable RGB years after that. So let's see how this evolves. We're just at the start, right? There's much more to come this year. If you like the video and you like the music, you like all that, hit the join button to support the channel. We really need your support this year, guys. Let's go for half a million subscribers this year. Let's double what we've got. We gotta do it this year, guys. Together, we can do it, right? Help us out. We love you all very much. And if you stuck around to this part of the video, I just wanted to share this with you, a little bit of a studio update. We've got like new ambient lighting that we've put around the top of the studio. Maybe you can see that, maybe not. But this is something we're working on at the moment. It's an ongoing thing. And we're almost done next week. We'll have the studio finished and we should be able to show you a new studio tour the end of next week. We've been filming all of the stuff as we've been doing it. It doesn't look like anything because I haven't really shown you that much. We're kind of filming around what we're working on. You also notice that that door behind us, you can't see through it anymore. That's one of the new things we added to the studio as well. But yes, watch this video here. Maybe it's an MSI video about the Project Zero motherboard when it first landed with us, or maybe it's the Project Zero build that we've already done, or maybe it's the Lankul 216 review we did when the 216 came out. Who knows? It's a mystery. Yep. <laughs> Thanks for watching.